This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through and look at earnings per share now, which is one of the key accounting ratios used by your investors. Uh, it's so important that it is disclosed by your listed companies at the bottom of your statement of profit or loss. That's how much prominence it has. So let's just see why it is important because it's a much better indicator of performance than just your standard earnings figure. Earnings is a headline figure. It's what's reported all the time about how well a company has done, but your earnings per share is a much better indicator of a company's true performance. So let's just go through and see why. Uh, so imagine you've got the, a company's, shall we say, profit for the year. So remember, profit for the year, is exactly the same, isn't it, as your earnings. Uh, and if we look at those earnings for three years, years one, two, and three, uh, then what you can go through and see there is that in the first year, we make profits for the year of 10,000. We make profits for the year in the second year of 12, and in the third year, we make profits, is it, of 15, okay? Uh, so if I were to ask you the question, how is that company performing? I think the answer would be, the answer would be, yes, it's performing better each year, isn't it, okay? In fact, it's gone from 10,000 in the first to 12, so it's grown by 2,000. And then in the second year, it's grown by a further 3,000, hasn't it? Uh, into that third year. So everything looks rosy, doesn't it? But watch this. If we go through that and look at the number of shares that are in issue, remember the number of shares that are in issue uh, is going to show how much potential finance we have raised during the year, doesn't it? Uh, by equity finance. If the number of shares have gone up, uh, assuming that it's not a bonus issue, uh, then it might be a rights issue or a new issue of shares and we have raised more cash. And if we've raised more cash by issuing shares, then the management should be using that cash to increase profitability, shouldn't it? Okay. So what we've got, if we say in the first year, there are 100,000 shares in issue. If that's the case, my earnings per share, so quite simply, my earnings divided by the number of shares, so is that 10,000 divided by 100,000 gives me 0.1, doesn't it? Okay, uh, if we take my earnings to be in dollars, that's 0.1 dollars, which is 10 cents, isn't it? If we say that there has been no issue of shares in that second year, so we still have 100,000 shares in issue, then you will see that you get, again, if we work things in dollars, that's 0.12 dollars per share, which is 12 cents, isn't it? Okay. So you can see there that the earnings per share has increased. Okay. We haven't issued any more shares, so we haven't generated any more finance, but without any extra finance, we've actually generated more profit. So we've done really, really well running the business there, a little pat on the back for ourselves. Uh, however, let's have a look at the third year, year three, because the profits have gone up to 15,000. And before we were saying that that does make it look like we have gone through and performed better. But let's just say that there are now 200,000 shares in issue because we went and offered up a right issue right at the start of the year okay so if we've got 200,000 shares maybe it's a one for one rights issue isn't it okay fully successful everybody took up the shares and we generated all the cash what now happens well we've generated cash at the start of the year from issuing those extra 100,000 shares and that extra cash we've generated should go in and be used for the year to help us generate more profit shouldn't it well, it has generated more profit. It's gone up from 12 to 15,000. But if you work that out as an earnings per share, 
you get is it 0 0.075 so seven and a half cents well that looks a little bit different doesn't it you were sat there as a director thinking brilliant yeah i've increased the profits from 12,000 up to 15,000 i've done so well this year everybody's going to be really 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 happy until we go through there and report on the face of the statement of profit or loss as you are a listed company the fact that the earnings per share has fallen not just slightly fallen it's, it's fallen quite dramatically it's nearly gone down to half hasn't it it's getting close to that six cents per share so earnings per share is a really 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 important performance indicator yeah much better than just analyzing your total profits for the year every single year as it takes account of the shares that have been issued and the finance that has been raised and then that finance that's been raised how well that's been used to generate profits okay so it's important to bear that in mind you're not going to get examined upon how eps is important you just need to understand why uh, when we go through and look at earnings per share you will see that there are two types of earnings per share figure uh, we'll first of all look at your basic earnings per share now don't be if you like misled there by the word basic it can get quite tricky uh, but basic earnings per share goes through and looks at the current earnings for the year and the, the number of shares that are in issue in the year so it takes account of everything that's happened in in this 12 months uh, then what we go through and do is we look at your diluted earnings per share and your diluted earnings per share goes through and takes account of any potential future share issues because if there are potential future share issues the number of shares will go up the earnings per share will go down and it might be worthwhile letting the shareholders know that in the future your basic earnings per share could become ever so slightly diluted and by dilute by diluted we're saying reduced okay so we need to calculate the basic eps the diluted eps the more you practice these questions the easier it becomes at the end of the day it's more of a maths exercise as opposed to any accounting entry exercise there are no debits there are no credits it's all about the calculation of an eps figure whether that's a basic or diluted eps figure so we're going to go through and look at how we calculate your basic earnings per share as we said in the introduction it's all about the calculations and the numbers as opposed to any debits and credits that there are no debits and credits within the session uh, so the basic earnings per share formula is there within your notes uh, it's not a formula that's given to you on the formula sheet so you have to remember it but there's not much of a formula to remember uh, it's your earnings divided by your shares however we just need to be a little bit careful when we talk about earnings that we use the correct earnings figure and that when we use a share figure we're careful about the number of shares with regards to the type of share issue and also when those shares were issued during the year okay so the first one that you've got on the top is it talks about the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders of the parent so if you're just looking at a single set of company accounts with no group aspect at all you just take the profit for the year figure at the bottom which 99.9% .9 of the time in questions is what you will have okay however just be aware that if it were to be in a group scenario then what you have within the group is that you have is it your group profit for the year at the bottom so after you've done all of the consolidation and then remember that's a split isn't it into the amounts attributable to the parent and the amounts attributable to the non-controlling interest so we did plenty of that split didn't we whereby we worked out the non-controlling interest and then we worked out the amounts attributable to the parent as a balancing figure wasn't it all sound familiar hopefully it does well what we've got there now is which profit figure do we use in terms of the amounts attributable to the ordinary shareholders of the parent okay we're reporting to the parent shareholders so we want to look at the profits that are attributable to them if that's the case 
then that is the figure that we are going to go through and use, isn't it? Okay, because that is what the parent owns. Essentially, it's all of the parent's profits plus, if you like, their share of S's profits, isn't it? Okay, excellent. The other bit, just to be careful as well, is when you take that figure that's attributable to the parent, what you do need to do there is you need to deduct is it your irredeemable preference dividend okay uh why well first of all we're looking at the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders so we don't want anything to do with the preference shareholders now the preference shareholders are only entitled to their preference dividend so we need to remove the preference dividend from those profits however if you think about a redeemable preference share dividend a redeemable preference share dividend is treated as a finance cost isn't it and therefore that will already have been deducted within our statement of profit or loss however what we then need to go through and do is think about the irredeemable preference dividend we don't need to worry about the redeemable one that's been dealt with. It's already been removed from our profits. So we are left with what's left for the ordinary shareholders, but also the irredeemable preference shareholders. Because that irredeemable preference dividend is normally deducted within the statement of changes in equity. So therefore, it will not have been deducted from the profits attributable to the parent. If that's the case, you need to deduct it. OK, so do just be on the lookout for that in, in case it cropped up within any particular question. OK, it could be a small little objective test question. Uh, so that's looking at the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders of the parents. OK, excellent. Uh, next bit is going through there and looking at the share issue. And uh, most of the time we need to look at what's referred to as a, a weighted average number of shares. Because when we're looking there at a weighted average, we can't just look at a the, the number of shares in issue at the end of the year. Why? Well, if you think about it, profits accrue, don't they, over that 12-month period. And if we've issued shares at the end of the year, then the cash that we'll have received will not have been able to feed in to generating any profits. So we want to try and use the number of shares that were in issue earlier in the year. Similarly, if we issued shares earlier in the year, then therefore there has been more cash in issue for a longer period of time within the year. And therefore, what we need to do is we need to use a number of shares that is more heavily weighted to the period of time where we had that higher number of shares in issue because with those higher number of shares and the higher level of cash we would have been able to boost our profits in the latter part of the year so what we need to do is we need to do a weighted average and when we're looking at a weighted average that weighted average is normally done based upon the number of months that the shares have been in issue for okay so we need to work out the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders of the parent and also the weighted average number of shares. That weighted average number is based upon the number of months. OK, so we're going to go through and focus our attention now on the number of shares in issue during the year. OK, because there are three separate ways that we have in which the share structure of an entity can change. The first change to our share capital is whereby we have an issue of shares which takes place at their full market price. So the shares are currently listed. We know what the share price is and we are going to issue it at that corresponding share price. If that's the case, what's going to happen there is that when we receive the cash from our shareholders, that will be invested in new projects, which will increase the earnings, won't it? And it will increase the earnings from the date that we receive the cash. If that's the case, we need to go through there and increase the number of shares from the date that we receive the cash. And what we therefore need to do is a weighted average number of shares calculation based upon the number of months 
that those shares have been an issue for okay uh, when you have is it a bonus issue remember a bonus issue is an issue of shares for free uh, we credited share capital, debited share premium, so there is no cash that is issued, is there? Uh, if that's the case, if there's no cash, then there's no impact in earnings, is there? So it wouldn't make any difference when we issue those shares. We could issue them at the start of the year, uh, the end of the year, halfway through the year. There will be no impact whatsoever on our earnings. If that's the case, what we're going to go through and do there is we will assume that the shares have always, always, always been an issue. So even if they were issued on the last day of the year, halfway through the year, we will assume that they were issued way back. So it will have been an issue at least from the start of the current year. Okay, so there is no need to do any weighted average calculation. We just assume the shares have always been an issue. However, the problem there is that your earnings have stayed the same. The number of shares will have gone up. So that will have reduced your earnings per share, won't it? If that's the case, what's going to happen there is that you will also need to restate your comparatives. Okay. But we'll look at that afterwards. Uh, if you have there, is it a, a right issue? Well, you do receive cash from the shareholders. So therefore, there will be an impact on your earnings. But the issue that you have there is that a right issue is issuing shares, isn't it, at a discount. So at a discount below their true market value. So we are receiving cash. So we do need a weighted average calculation. Uh, again, based upon the number of months. However, what we need to go through and do there, because they are issued at slightly below their market value, there is... A free element to them isn't there okay you're getting so many shares at a discount so essentially some of those shares are for free given that you've paid for the rest at full market value if that makes sense so what we need to go through and do there we need to make an adjustment by what we will see as a right issue fraction to try and go back and, and adjust for that free number of shares like we do with your bonus issue by assuming that the shares have always, always been in place. Again, as there is a free element, like regards to our bonus issue, we will also need to go through there and ensure that we restate the comparatives. Okay, and we'll pull all that together as we go through and look at the next video with the example.